Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, today I will talk to you, uh, yeah, exactly about how to, what we do at Trust you to make it possible for travelers all over the world to find their perfect hotel. So just something about myself. Um, I'm from Italy, from Modena, Italy. I have a um, background in both computer science and mathematics, so I, I'm both, let's say, a computer scientist and a mathematician, or maybe none of them. Um, I then did my PhD in Karlsruhe, Germany. Uh, the topic of my thesis was uh, basically development algorithms for network analysis, and I defended my thesis last year in December, and since February, I'm now working as a data scientist at TrustU with a focus on natural language processing and algorithms and, and machine learning. So, uh, what is it, the question that the meta review team at Trust you, so the team I'm part of, um, uh, is working on? So what is the problem we're, we're working on? So what we want to do is, for every hotel in the world, we want to provide a summary of uh, traveler reviews. And why would we want to do this? Why would we want to provide a summary? Well, um, if, if you, I guess most of you, whenever you book a hotel, uh, you first look at at, at reviews from other travelers. And if you think about it, this is quite uh, amazing that we can do this because maybe 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there was no way of doing this. So whenever booking a hotel, what people could do was basically only uh, pick some hotel based on, uh, yeah, basically how it looks from the outside or just listening from some, some uh, recommendation from friends who had already been to the city maybe. Uh, and what we have now is we basically, it's like having Maybe for a city, we want to go to millions of friends who can tell you their experience about the hotels uh, in that city. And of course, we cannot, uh, on the other hand, the problem is that we cannot really read millions of reviews whenever we, wanted to, whenever we want to make a decision about in which uh, hotel to go to. And what most people do is they just read a few reviews, go through a few reviews, and then make their decision based on that. But of course, um, different travelers also have different expectations and um, they look for different things in hotels. So it might be that the experience of the few reviews we read from other travelers does not really reflect our expectations in a hotel. So what we wanna do is basically uh, provide a summary containing all the relevant information from all the reviews we can find uh, for, for each hotel, or all the reviews we can find online and um, make it like a short summary so that people can, can read it and immediately get all the important information about the hotel. So these are, these are a few examples of information we can show about a hotel. Um, we can show, we can be interested, for example, in how the building of the hotel is, um, if it's modern, clean, uh, about the view um, that the hotel has, uh, if it's good for parting, for example, uh, and for example, another, like we can also show information such as solo travelers complain about TV. So this is the um, uh, also kind of detail we can provide. And uh, oops, I wanted to. So yeah, I just wanted to show how it looks from the from our website. So this is basically. Uh, can you see it? No, you can't. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, maybe I'll show it later, but. Uh, let's go on with this. So, uh, the, this information is not only provided on our website. Uh, we also um, provide this information to other websites. You probably know Kayak. Um, this, and you might have seen this on Kayak already. So, Kayak can, can show you information about hotels, for example, the amenities, the vibe, location. So, this information is all um, data we provide to, to Kayak. And, um, and not only Kayak, but also Google. So whenever you Google for hotel, um, you see uh, basically, uh, you, you might have seen this already on Google. So this is also data we provide. Uh, for example, here we show uh, the score given by different types of travelers and, uh, and also uh, this is shown by Google. This is also data we provide. And it's a kind of a shorter version of our uh, meta review. So basically, um, what we show here is, um, yeah, like a summary, for example, of the rooms. Guests like the, the rooms, and for example, they notice that uh, maintenance could be improved. These are examples, or information about the location, service, and these uh, are a few examples, basically. 
So how do we actually get to the, to the meta review? How, well, how do we uh, build our meta review? Every week we uh, crawl reviews from many different sources on the internet. Uh, we have in our database about uh, 620,000 hotels and we crawl quite a lot of reviews, about uh, on average three million new reviews per week. That's quite a lot of data we have and we store this data in a Hadoop cluster. And the first step that we uh, do basically on analyzing this data is the semantic analysis of it. So um, basically for each review, uh, we, we, for, for each sentence in each review, we extract, um, we map each part of the sentence to categories. For example, this part of the sentence refers to the bathroom or this other part of the sentence uh, refers to the uh, breakfast of the hotel. And in addition to categorizing uh, these parts of the sentences, we also uh, compute, the senti we compute a sentiment for them. So was the sentence positive, was it negative? And after this part, we basically aggregate this data and we apply machine learning algorithms to, to them and in the end, we, we generate the text that you saw before. And we provide this text. Um, we showed our, this text on our website, but we also provide it to um, Google, Kayak, uh, and there are actually more, uh, Hotels.com, Holiday Chuck, uh, to several other websites. So this is just to give you an overview of the technologies we use uh, to build a meta review. Um, of course, Python, so almost all of the code we write is written in Python. That's why we're, I'm presenting this here. And uh, we use Luigi for our pipelines. We use uh, Hadoop and Spark for processing the large amount of data we have. And we use yeah, um, Postgre, MongoDB as databases. And then we, uh, what you see on the right basically are all the, some of the libraries we use for machine learning, just to give you an overview. Okay, um, now that I gave you basically an overview of what uh, we do at TrustU and the meta review team does, uh, I would like to talk to you about a specific problem that my team has been working on in the, in the last months, and specifically it's hotel classification. So the, question, uh, the questions we are trying to answer here are, for example, what are the most romantic hotels in town? Say you might want to, uh, go to a very romantic hotel, to a very romantic weekend, and you're looking for the best uh, hotel for this. Or uh, you're looking for a hotel that is appropriate for a family holiday. Or here there are some more examples, for example, which hotels have the best casinos, best lake view, uh, are the best ones if you wanna go to a, a golf course, for example, or um, yeah, or the best sea view. I mean, there are many, many questions we, we can consider. and. Our solution of, to this problem is basically um, composed of these parts that I'm going to describe. So first of all, we um, basically represent the reviews as vectors. That's the first part we need to do in order to be then able to apply machine learning algorithms to them for classification. And in particular, we consider two uh, ways of um, representing text, representing reviews as vectors. One is TFIDF, which I'm going to present soon, and the other one is um, doc2vec embeddings. I'm also going to tell you a little bit about them. And after this, basically, as I said, we apply machine learning algorithms. And another thing we do is we also combine um, basically the review content with geographical data whenever it, it applies, whenever it makes sense to improve our classifications. So now I'm going to talk to you about TFIDF. This is the only slide with uh, formulas. Don't be scared, I'm going to then make an example. To give you an example, it's actually quite a simple method. Um, the idea behind TFIDF, uh, which stands for Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency, is to reflect, reflect the importance of a term, which we call T, for a document D in a corpus, okay, a collection of, of other documents. So we can introduce the term frequency, which is basically simply um, for term T in document D, the number of occurrences of T in D, divided by the total number of words in D. And we might uh, then assume that um, 
a term is important for, for the document if its frequency is high, right? We could say, okay, if a term appears very often in a document, then this should be quite important. But this is not always the case because, for example, if we consider hotel reviews, we, we might have that words such as hotel, they're going to appear very often in reviews, so it might not be so relevant for the specific uh, review we are considering. And um, so basically, there's another term called inverse document frequency, which gives a higher score to words that, to terms that uh, do not appear very often in the other documents of the corpus, so are more specific for the document we are considering. And this is simply defined as the logarithm of n, which is the number of documents in our corpus, divided by um, the number of documents in which uh, the term t appears. So yeah, this will be high if the term doesn't appear in appears only in a few documents. And in the end, the TFIDF score is simply computed as the product of the term frequency and the inverse document frequency. So to give you an example, let's say we have a document and this document is, I hope this talk is not too boring, and the corpus we have is composed of, I hope this talk is not too boring, this talk is just as boring as filing tax returns, and tax returns are not that boring. So um, let's say we want to compute the TFIDF score of boring. And OK, the term frequency is simply 1 divided by 8, right? Because uh, there are eight words in our document. And boring appears only once. So uh, that's why we had 1 divided by 8. Uh, but the inverse document frequency in this case is the logarithm of uh, 3, because we have three documents, divided by 3, because uh, boring appears in all of them. So the logarithm of 1 is 0. So what we have in the end is that the TFIDF score of boring is also 0. Okay? And this makes sense if you think about it, because boring is not specific for, for document D. Right? It appears everywhere. And if we consider hope instead, we have that the term frequency is just the same as uh, for document D, as for, sorry, for boring. Uh, it also appears one, once. And, uh, but in this case, the inverse document frequency is higher because hope appears only in this specific document, right? So uh, in this case, we have the logarithm of 3 divided by 1. So in the end, we also have that this, the TFIDF score is higher. OK, now you might be asking yourself, um, why do we want to compute the, the TFIDF score of, of terms in a document? The idea is that if we compute the TFIDF score for each um, term we have in the corpus, then uh, we can represent um, each document as a vector of the TFIDF scores of the terms that are present in the corpus. So to give you an example, to, to consider the same example as before, uh, for document D, I hope this talk is not too boring, we have that we can represent it as this vector that you see here. So um, you see that a lot of, in this case, a lot of uh, terms have zero score. For boring, we saw it before already. And for the other terms on, on the right, it's basically because they do not appear, right? They are in the other documents of the corpus, but not in D. So uh, their term frequency is zero. OK, and the idea behind this is um, that the TFIDF vectors of similar documents um, will also be similar to each other, OK? So if you consider, for example, say, uh, um, you have a document, you have a corpus composed of uh, recipes of different foods and you consider TFIDF scores of uh, two chocolate cake recipes, for example, you'll have that um, their TFIDF scores, their TFIDF factors will be close to each other because words such as chocolate, butter, or whatever other ingredients are in a chocolate cake, uh, they will have a very high TFIDF scores for both uh, recipes. And yeah, in our case, of course, we're talking about reviews. So each document is uh, this, the set of all reviews for a certain hotel, basically. And the idea is that if we have a training set, so a set of uh, hotels for which we know that they are of a certain category, for example, family hotels, then we can use machine learning algorithms to classify also all other hotels and being able to say whether they are also family hotels or not. Um, yeah, so creating training sets um, is quite important. So we actually spent quite some time on this uh, because um, if you don't really have reliable training sets, then um, you can be pretty sure that your, your algorithm won't work well. 
So uh, we built them based on the review content. We also considered the amenities that these hotels had. And when it made sense, uh, we also used ge geographical information. For this, we used OpenStreetMap, which is actually quite, uh, quite an amazing project. It contains geographical information for, for many, many categories. So for us, it was actually very, very helpful. Examples of information it contains are coordinates of coastlines, highways, we yeah, ski lifts, all kinds of tourist attractions, but also golf courses, casinos, really a lot of information. And I will also now tell you something about uh, Wertovac, which is also another, um, yeah, we, and a, let's say the baseline for another technique we used. And the idea here is uh, quite different from TFIDF. So the idea here is um, we, um, say that words are similar when they appear in similar contexts. So we also take the context of words into account and not just their frequency. And what is the context of a word? For example, if you consider the sentence here, the context of fox is the set of words that are preceding and, and succeeding fox. So for example, in this case, we have a window of, of two and uh, therefore quick brown and jumps over are the context of, of fox. And the basic idea here is that uh, synonyms like intelligent and smart, for example, uh, they will appear in, in similar contexts, right? And yeah, so the basic idea to, to create a word to back model is to uh, train a neural network with a, the with a word we're considering, and then um, the hidden layer of this neural network will be used to, to represent then the word as a vector, because that's in the end what we want to do, right? Representing uh, words as vectors. And yeah, so we'll have that words with similar context in the end will result in similar vectors. So this is a quite famous plot. You might have seen it already. Actually, on the website where I found it, it mentioned that it's illegal to talk about word to back without showing it. So here's the plot. And so what you can see here is quite nice is that basically word to back encapsulates um, relations between words. And in particular, we have that, for example, um, the distance uh, between, between similar words is also, um, pairs of similar words are also the same. So uh, the distance between king and queen, for example, is the same as the distance between man and woman. And we can write this, this nice equation that uh, basically uh, king minus, oh yeah, it's king minus, actually wanted to have it here, king minus man plus woman is equal to queen, which actually, actually makes sense. Um, yeah, and in the end, we don't want to just represent words as vectors, we want to represent reviews, right? So documents, and what we use is basically doc to vec, which combines, uh, let's say, vectors of all words uh, that are in a document into one final vector, let's say. Okay, so to give you an idea then of our, how our classification pipeline works, um, the first thing, as I said, we want to transform right, reviews into vectors, so we do this with either TFIDF or doc to vec embeddings. And we, since we have reviews in many different languages, we do this um, separately for each language. Um, and then, again, separately for each language, we use a classifier called gradient boosting. I'm not gonna talk about it now because we don't really have um, enough time for that, uh, but it's basically an ensemble of decision trees. You can take a look at the Wikipedia article or you, there are many resources online. And basically in the end what we do is we combine the predictions of the classifiers for each language into one final classifier, giving weights based on uh, the number of reviews we have in the different languages. So basically for a hotel we have 90% of reviews written in German and only a few reviews in Italian, then we'll give a higher weight to, to the German review, to the German classifier. All right, sounds like everything should work fine, right? This makes sense. Um, yeah, it did work, uh, it does work quite well in most cases, but now just to, I would just like to tell you a few examples where we, a few problematic cases we have. Um, they're also kind of funny. So um, one problem we had is that when we were classifying golf hotels, uh, we basically uh, realized that some hotels um, that were actually not close to any golf course, they, they got positively classified. And actually what was actually quite weird was that only the German classifier, so the classifier for the German language was really confident about these hotels being uh, golf hotels. But for the other languages, this was not the case. So we, we were really confused what was happening and why only Germans were talking about a golf course. And 
no, what, what then we realize is that uh, the English word uh, golf is actually golf in German. So uh, basically the reviews were, were referring to the Gulf of Naples, so they were not really viewing to a golf course, but still they, the, there were a lot of mentions of, of the word golf, of course. And uh, another problem we had is that um, basically in a small town outside Atlantic City, there were a lot of mentions of, of casino related terms, actually a lot of positive mentions. And uh, although there was no casino close to this, to this hotel, so we were a bit confused. And basically it turned out that in fact, in these towns, uh, there are a bit far from, from Atlantic City. People were really happy about being far away from casinos, like to be in a quiet place. And that's why they had all these positive mentions of uh, casino. Yeah. So basically, uh, the solutions we had, these are, of course, quite um, complicated problems. So, uh, but with the, the solutions we found, so there's still room for improvement, of course. Uh, but the solutions we found so far is basically to also use geographic data. This also helped quite a lot, for example, with problems such as, uh, yeah, casinos, uh, golf courses. So we could also use this information to make sure that we don't classify hotels there are not close to the amenity we're considering. And um, in addition to this, we, we also perform quite an extensive cross-validation in order to be sure that we pick parameters that can guarantee us uh, high precision. And then ideas for future work, um, we could consider actually these ambiguation techniques. Um, and uh, so this is actually an idea that a colleague gave me quite recently. So this is something we might look into. And also we could think of combining TFIDF with word embeddings because what we're doing right now is for different categories, we are just picking the one that works best between TFIDF and, and uh, doc to vac embeddings. But um, basically there are also ways of combining both. So this might lead to even better results. So this is basically what I wanted to present to you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, or you can also contact me. This is my email address. And you can also feel free to take a look at our uh, website. So um, basically, there you can find a little bit about what uh, the engineering department at Trust You is doing, also something about job openings if you're interested. And yeah, that's basically what I wanted to tell you. Thank you. Hi, thank you for the nice talk. Uh, do you have any intuition on when uh, DFIDF works best and when Dr. Vec works best? Uh, well, what do we, yeah. Okay, so my, my intuition and something that has been shown uh, in practice is that um, Dr. Vec doesn't work very well when your uh, document is short. So it's, uh, in those cases, it might be the case that TFIDF is working better. Um, yeah. This is basically, it, we, this is something we still have to uh, investigate a bit more though. Uh, so basically what we did is, was mostly comparing the two methods and seeing which one was performing best. But yeah, this is also maybe something we can investigate a bit more, like why exactly this is happening. But this is uh, quite, this is certainly one of the reasons. So the length of the document is, uh, influences this quite a bit. And yeah. Hi, first of all, thank you. I think it was a great talk. Um, I was wondering whether you um, consider that um, maybe many of those reviews might be fake and whether that's a problem that you need to tackle. Um, yeah, this is actually a, a very good question. So one thing is, in general, at Trusty, we're only considering reviews from verified sources. So for example, only reviews from booking.com, where you can know for sure that one can post a review only if it if this person has already has really stayed to the hotel, or 
uh, Google. Uh, we also use reviews from Google. So we don't really use Google from sources from which there's no way of really identifying the person. Um, but uh, yeah, apart from this, uh, whether a person, whether the news is fake or not, whether, sorry, the reviews is fake or not, uh, this is not something we are um, checking yet, but uh, this is also something we talked about. So there's, uh, it might be that in the future we, we certainly plan to consider this as well. Um, Thanks for your talk, it was really good. Do you have any recommendations for tools for labeling data? I struggle. For, right. labeli for labeling data, do you have any recommendations for tools or applications that help with that? Okay, what do you mean exactly, like labeling? So say, yeah, so say you've got web pages and you want to label um, the data you find on the HTML. Do you have any tools that help, for, help with that? Um. I'm not sure. Did you yeah, yeah. So for building a for building a training data set, you've got some like, reviews. Ah, okay. You for labeling, like saying you want to start labeling that, and you've got lots of them to do, right? So yeah, sure. Uh, no, is there any tools? Uh, we didn't really use any tool in our case, so we mostly. Yeah, so we consider mostly the review content information, the frequency of terms, and we we looked at um, amenities as sp and things that are basically specific to our problem, like specific to, uh, for example, uh, lake hotels, so the vicinity to lakes, for example. So we didn't use any specific tools, so, so okay. unfortunately I don't Thank have you. any recommendations. Yes, I'll keep sorry. looking. <laughs> Thank you for the great talk. Um, you mentioned that example with German, where golf means two things. Mm -hmm. Do you know how word to work behaves when, when you have synonyms like that, that fall on the same word? Um, like golf uh, with different meanings? Yeah, like what, what does the German golf vector look like? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, uh, no, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, this is, yeah. <laughs> A difficult Thank question, you. yeah. Is a Google, it's a Google Translator from which one is the relabel? Google Translator? Like if we can use that? Or what is the question? Yeah, it's like, for example, like go off to, mm -hmm. uh, you use the Google Translator to unify two um, no, no, we don't. So actually, we really like the classifiers. We we consider them really separately. So we don't translate any text. We have separate classifiers for German, separate classifiers for English. We don't use Google Translate. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, hello. Thank you for the talk. Um, I wonder about the data pre-processing. So it, there is some data cleansing that you. Uh, had a major one that you do, mm -hmm. so kind of clean up the data set and perhaps identify a name of places or things like that. Yeah, so um, I can't give you too much details about this because actually this is done by a different team. Um, this is not exactly so. There's another team that really works on their performance and semantic analysis and also takes care of, uh, yeah, cleaning the data, for example, removing stop words, um, um, yeah, tokenization, lemmatization, all this kind of thing. So a team, there's a team that is taking care of that. Um, and so, sorry, your question, uh, you asked me uh, what we do exactly, or? Uh, yeah, I was wondering some general uh, ideas if you could talk a yeah. little about yeah. that. Uh -huh. So I can give you just this general ideas because I'm, this is something that a different team does. I don't know if uh, maybe, Stefan, you want to add something on this or uh, it's okay. <laughs> well, maybe we can take this then offline. There are other also people here from my company also can give you maybe more details. Okay, uh, cool. Thank you. Okay, folks, we are out of time, so let's thank our speaker again.